Okay. Thank you, Victoria, for organizing this uh, very nice get-together. <clears throat> so it, it, I, I'm going to give you an, uh, just a, a, a little introduction to what the lasers, how the lasers started and, uh, and, uh, and uh, why they exist. Um, the, the umbrella organization is Leonardo Isast. How many people have heard of Leonardo Isast? Okay, quite a few. For the others, I, I strongly recommend you check the website leonardo.info. I'm actually not part of the board. I was at some point. Um, and in, in discussions with them, so that I'll make the, the long story short, that what, 42 years, they've been working on, on uh, promoting the intersection, the, the dialogue between art and science. And uh, so the laser started from uh, a, a fire chat, a fireside chat with uh, Roger Malina, who, who was the chairman of the, of the board. And uh, uh, the the, the idea was to democratize the process. Leonardo has uh, uh, um, an academic journal, MIT Press publishes it, it's a book series and so forth. But the idea was why don't we bring um, uh, the, the art science uh, projects to the general public um, <clears throat> with still the academic uh, uh, overtones, but you know, for everybody. So they started in January 2008 and uh, we have had more than 100 presenters. This uh, is not all of them. It's an old slide. And uh, <clears throat> they start in San Francisco. Uh, now they take place at uh, USF in San Francisco, at Stanford University in Silicon Valley, and uh, uh, starting in June at UC Berkeley uh, in, the, in the East Bay. And then <clears throat> we have sister series. One is the, at the National Academy of Sciences in uh, Washington, D.C. And I don't remember, I think the first one was in 2011. And now you know that there's also one uh, in Los Angeles. And then there have been salons called Lasers in New York. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, the idea is spreading, which is, uh, which is nice. <coughs> um, the format uh, that I use at USF, well, if you are there, these are the dates. Um, the format, I, uh, the San Francisco dates, depending on... Uh, the Stanford dates are very easy. I like to remember for myself, you know, 4, 4, 6, 6, 8, 8, 10, 10, 12, 12. And the Berkeley one will happen the day before. This way I don't forget. Um, <clears throat> uh, the way I organize them, this is the next one. Uh, it's going to be on Monday. Uh, is four presenters, 20 minutes each. I, f I found that 20 minutes is really, actually, Victoria's right, four minutes. In the age of Twitter, we, we have to go down to 140 <laughs> characters. Uh, 20 minutes is the maximum. I mean, after, after that, people tend to, to, to lose uh, concentration. And uh, <clears throat> I, I pick four people. Of course, uh, people are available that day. Uh, and I try to pick people from very different background and uh, from very different disciplines on different topics. And, uh, and the idea is precisely to force uh, synergies uh, among uh, among uh, disciplines, labs, individuals who don't normally talk to each other. And, and it is not easy. Uh, but we've had some, some interesting uh, interactions. So for example, on Monday I have uh, visual artist Terry Berlier mainly does uh, kinetic sculpture. Kurt Frank is a chemical engineer who's actually teaching a very nice class on, on uh, the, the materials so of painting. Deborah Gordon is a biologist, uh, probably one of the most famous who studies ants. And then we have a choreographer. That's uh, <coughs> anyway. So um, and then this uh, the one at Washington D.C., uh, which they do a much better job of archiving. And there, so if you go to their website, uh, which is not easy to memorize, but then if you go to to the you know, National Academy of Sciences website and uh, you Google Dazer, uh, I think they have all the videos of all the past uh, presentations. Um, and, and now we have it also in Los Angeles, thanks to Victoria's work. Um, so I like, I like the map. I hope five years from now I will be giving this presentation. There will be more, more dots around there. And then we'll have to find a way also to interact, right? Can you say something about this country? Yeah, well, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no colors to the state. <clears throat> anyway. So besides that, that, that was the, the little introduction for those who are new to the idea of the lasers. And uh, by the way, feedback is very welcome. I, I learned a lot from, uh, from the people who are coming and uh, uh, 
uh, people were telling me, uh, like the 20 minutes now, I'm really, I'm really, really strict about the 20 minutes because consistently the presentation that people like the, the most, they're not necessarily the greatest uh, projects. It's the people who can do it in 15 minutes, dun, 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 make the point, and then QA and so on. Uh, so the feedback is welcome. <clears throat> um, now, uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about this, and not to publicize my book, but because it also, Silicon Valley is actually a, a, a case that proves the importance <clears throat> of the arts, even in the most uh, advanced scientific technological environment. And, and that's one reason why I co-wrote that book. I wasn't that interested in telling the story of Intel, Apple, HP, and so forth. I was interested in finding out why it happened in Silicon Valley. It would be, if, we, if we had time, it would be interesting to go around the room and just get opinions why it happened in Silicon Valley after I tell you, oh, I don't tell you, after I tell you that one century ago, uh, Silicon Valley was pretty much uh, <clears throat> just orchards and desert. And these are considered the founders of Silicon Valley. But none of them, the, the, the one, uh, this one founded Stanford, that one uh, uh, turned uh, Stanford into an incubator of startups. Shockley is the one who opened the first uh, startup for uh, electronic things. Uh, but you would not explain how Silicon Valley happened uh, <coughs> without this. Uh, starting a century ago, the Bay Area became mainly a refuge for crazy artists. <laughs> if, you, if we were in the 50s and I ask you, what do you know of the Bay Area? Well, it's a place for crazy artists. There was absolutely no technology and no, um, and no uh, science, uh, very little science. And where was it? It was all pretty much on the East Coast. It was all pretty much Boston, Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York. At one point, Boston had 90% of the programmers in the world. How many programmers in Silicon Valley? I don't know because there was no software in Silicon Valley, so probably zero. So why, why today Silicon Valley? <clears throat> you cannot explain it just based on who invented the things that today uh, created, that eventually created the, uh, the modern technology. But maybe you can explain it with this. Why, why was, which headlines were about uh, uh, the Bay Area? It was about the beat poet, it was about the hippies, the summer of love. That was really, what was going on in technology in 1965 in, uh, in, uh, in the Bay Area? Virtually nothing, really, very, very, very little. And actually, these moments were mostly hostile to technology, which is kind of interesting, you know? <clears throat> so then you fast forward and, and you start having the first startups. And what is unique about Silicon Valley to this day is that they form a sort of commune, you know? And, and that's what. Texas, Motorola, RCA, the big uh, uh, initial uh, <coughs> electronic uh, companies, they never created this ecosystem of startups. Silicon Valley did. And, and uh, if, you, if you come from the hippie generation, maybe understand why. But if you come just for the big AT&T, IBM corporate headquarters, I don't think you can, you can easily explain how that happened. And then the first technology that comes to Silicon Valley is actually kind of weird. The SRI works on graphical user interfaces. <clears throat> Zero Spark works on computers that are for everybody, which in those days was kind of uh, um, unusual. It's a very casual, informal, egalitarian workplace, the first major company where people go to work in blue jeans and t-shirts. And uh, at some point, uh, the personal computers come out. The first personal computers were just kits that you would buy, uh, today we would say online. In those days, you had to write to a magazine and get it back. And uh, what happens in Silicon Valley? They form this computer of crazy inventors. And uh, one, of, one of them is this Wozniak who goes on to, to start to, to build the Apple One. <clears throat> then Unix and Internet, when they come, when they come out, uh, there were government, and eight, uh, Unix was an at and project, that mainly used for the internet, and the internet was a government project. In fact, it was a defense project. But when they come to the Bay Area, they change completely uh, uh, spirit. They become uh, uh, technology uh, used and created by ordinary people and mostly by very eccentric people. I met Bill Joy when he was at uh, UC Berkeley and he had very long hair. He was dressed like a wizard from the Middle Ages. And <clears throat> but for him, 
the Unix was something completely different. It wasn't used for the internet or whatever, you know, and, 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 and uh, hundreds of programmers were contributing to the uh, UCB uh, uh, Unix. And same for the internet. The internet today, you don't think of the internet as a defense project. And the way it started being a community of people contributing to, to this thing was really through uh, the Bayer. The Bayer was one of the first uh, four nodes uh, at the SRI. So the bottom line <coughs> is that the Bayer did not have the original technology and science and everything. And if you try to explain why Silicon Valley happened where it happened, just by thinking about technology and science, you will not find an explanation. But if you think of that the Bay Area had all those crazy artists, whether you like them or not, it's another story. But they were crazy, and they were placing emphasis on uh, the eccentric, independent, doing something different. Then maybe you explain also Steve Jobs. Uh, so if you have a different answer, let me know. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and, Next speaker is Alison Caruth, uh, assistant professor of English, and I will not try to nope. decipher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.